Yes, thank you very much for your great presentations. And I will start first from, from the factors. First question will be to Lukas and to uh, Christian. As you are one of the best digital factors here in the C region, what is digital fact? What does the digital factoring mean for you? Well, for me personally, it's a, it's a bunch of drivers that could affect the factoring evolution positively, I would say. Um, actually, one of uh, them is the implementation of fully of, of um, full implementation of the digital end-to-end -end processes, from um, client onboarding process to, mm -hmm. uh, to regular financing. Mm, generally, the support of digitalization is, is a matter of how to make sure, sure that clients have the most sophisticated, most important uh, client needs, such as financing of the, uh, of the invoices anytime and anywhere, mm -hmm. quickness of the full digital um, factoring process, and that's the, that's the clue regarding to the mm -hmm. digitalization of the factoring industry. Mm -hmm. How quick is your factoring process right now? Uh, you mean micro factoring? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's very straightforward. Uh, clients, in our case, mm, have a very simple and intuitive onboarding process. Um, we don't disburse advance payments. We have a very simple fee schedule. Uh, and our, in our case, clients pay only for financing period. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a easy to understand offer. So uh, at ING, we finance the full invoice value straight away. Mm -hmm. um, we don't disburse advance payments. Uh, we don't have uh, mm, additional fees related mm -hmm. to changing the limit, granting mm -hmm. the limit, and even late payments. Mm -hmm. And this is something which distinguishes us on the Polish market. So if you upload if the invoice, how fast it will be financed? Um, it depends. <laughs> Come on. Uh, where it, when it's the primary process for the, for the client, I would say it's um, up to four hours. Mm -hmm. But of course, when it's the, um, let's say, current the existing customer, existing mm -hmm. customer, it's one minute. Okay, cool. Yeah. 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 Christian, what about instant factoring? So for us, uh, there's no such a thing as a, it's our DNA. Uh, we started in day one. Uh, with this mission that we want to serve the underbanked, the underserved, uh, to reach their full potential in uh, business mm -hmm. by providing them a 100% digital solution. So that's what we did in day one. Mm -hmm. um, we are not a legacy company or anything of sorts. Um, and we strive to be you know, super fast, super easy, uh, approve we have internally a saying, uh, which is a little bit of an anecdotal saying. If uh, we have an entrepreneur that breathes and have an invoice, we want to finance them. Mm -hmm. uh, how can you do that? Only through digital, fully digital solution. Yeah. So we r we run on average like thirty thousand transactions per hour with mm -hmm. a team of twelve, okay. and we're thinking we're too much. Uh -huh. But with the same team, uh, we were able to increase this number this year like on 50% without hiring anybody. Mm -hmm. So it's super scalable. And um, we also uh, see the opportunity to be a, a regional player, if not an European player, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think what we do can be, it's universally valid. So we are now in two countries, we're moving to the third one. And mm -hmm. the fourth one, in my view, it should be whole Europe combined. There's no point to go country by country. Yes. Let's do whole Europe, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, with yeah. a centralized platform. Yeah. Why yeah. To, to go crazy and yes. every two years to develop a new country, it's hard work, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Do it once, do yeah. it successfully and yes. serve everybody who needs this, yeah. Yeah, 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 great. What is it for tech companies? 
what does the digitalization of factoring mean? Yesterday in our workshop, uh, we had this discussion and um, um, the panelists came up also with um, quick and easy, was, were the ones that came up uh, the most, I remember. Um, and um, so quick and easy and good looking if possible easy, uh, to understand. Uh, for me, on top of that, digitalization means uh, to be able to create new business opportunities, uh, business cases. Uh, and we were using, the, in, our, in our case, um, the uh, Islamic factoring mm -hmm. um, business case uh, as one. And if you remember this one here on the screen, um, that is another digitalization, understanding the behavior of your customers, allows you, of course, complete new business cases, evaluating uh, your customers and debtors basically instantly, something that uh, uh, insurance companies also would like to, would like to know. So um, yes, quick, easy, et cetera. But on top of that, the digital space, and I mean, if we look back 20 years, uh, since, uh, since we have uh, grown the digital space, how many new business cases have come up? I mean, um, Uber and um, Airbnb and all these companies that are out there are digital companies and um, creating new business cases. So for me, that's one of the major ones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I think we should also remember about the past, because right now, I think in Poland, I will refer to the Polish market, I think we have fully digital process in 12 factors or fintechs, yeah? But I remember when I started working in Raiffeisenbank, Poland at the time in 2010, I remember when we were having, a, we were having an agreement, factoring agreement, so the client needed to give me an invoice, I needed to send this invoice to the um, headquarter in Warsaw, so someone should to proceed this, mm -hmm. this uh, invoice. So right now we are, I think, in good position, but what the digitalization means to me, it's of course doing everything without going home, so I'm from my laptop, but also important thing is to be sure that I am able to cooperate with third party, like insurance company in this case, some, some case of embedded finance, because for me, factoring and insurance company is a very good marriage. The marriage should have everyone, yeah? So uh, I would like to have the access for the information about my debtor's problems, because why should I care about their problems? I provided my goods, I gave them uh, the invoice, uh, I financed the invoice with the factor, and I'm scared if he will pay, pay this invoice back. I shouldn't be scared. I want to sleep well. So I think cooperation with insurance, fast cooperation with insurance company is also one, of, one part of uh, digitization of the, of the processes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Christian, next question to you. What is the driving force of, of your growth on each the markets that you are present, so for two for Romanian market and Serbian now, right? I think it's it has to do a lot with our positioning. So in we see in other more, more let's say more developed uh, economies that the fintechs is the ones also active in the factoring space. Mm -hmm. They really try to compete uh, uh, shoulder to shoulder with the banks. Mm -hmm. We were not as arrogant to believe we can. Uh, disrupt the banks in full because obviously we didn't have the balance sheet, we had the same cost of funds, a lot of the mm -hmm. good things that the banks can offer to clients. At the same time, the banks, due to all the regulatory frameworks and all the uh, very strict uh, risk procedures, they leave a lot of this, the traditional sector leaves a lot of companies, they can't cater to them. Mm -hmm. This is the reality, it's a global problem, it's not just in one particular market. So our idea was, why don't we do what the banks do for the top of the market, but to the bottom of the pyramid? So basically, today in today's world with the ESG and uh, impact investing, it's now super famous. Mm -hmm. We were labeled by the industry as a social impact lender. To be honest, we, when we started, we had no plan to become a social impact lender, but, but the, the fact we decided to focus on this market segment under certain the bank, it made us, uh, the industry gave us this label. And today, yes, we benefit of some support. 
uh, on that support from investors and from financiers alike. But um, what drives us, uh, I'll tell you some numbers, for example. Mm -hmm. In Romania in 2021, the whole factoring market combined was doing 8 billion euro mm -hmm. with 3,400 companies. Mm -hmm. So 3,400 Romanian companies had access to fa traditional factoring. Mm -hmm. We have more than double that number of companies in our platform, mm -hmm. more than 7,000. Okay. So the whole market combined has 3,400. Yeah. We have 7,000 plus companies mm -hmm. enrolled today in our cool. platform. Mm -hmm. Why am I telling you? Of course, the numbers are nowhere near the, the, the mainstream mm -hmm. uh, factoring. Uh, in terms of volumes, uh, it is much, much smaller. But it just shows that uh, it's, you ask me what uh, was driving the growth. That drives the growth, the positioning in the market, mm -hmm. really caring for the small guy that mm -hmm. nobody cares about. Yeah. After being rejected at five institutions, he's like a bit depressed. He's a mm -hmm. bit uh, upset, I would say, even mm -hmm. frustrated, mm -hmm. yeah, because his, uh, his value is not uh, confirmed yes. mm -hmm. by the market, traditional market, and we are there to really help them to grow mm -hmm. to the next level. So that's yeah. what drives. And these numbers for Romania, I checked them in Italy, it's the same. Mm -hmm. Less than 1% of the market, the traditional okay. sector, yeah. uh, caters for less than 1% of the companies. Mm -hmm. It's valid in Spain mm -hmm. and in, in Serbia, where we are also present directly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wanted to ask, look, ask Lukas as well, and then Federica, you all right? <laughs> I want to ask Lukas you because you are one of the leaders here in the Polish market and included microfacturing and I also bring your example because you were actually the first on the market to embed the microfacturing to the e invoicing platform. So tell us what drives your volumes. Um, well, I have no intention of, of being original. Uh, and uh, revealing any specific tip here, because um, I would say the answer is truly simple. Um, there are not one or even two explicit factors that guarantee dynamic growth of the business. Um, this is certainly a more elaborate ecosystem, which means um, it's a part of slogan, but the, the right people with good ideas using the right tools. Mm -hmm. And essentially, um, support of the digitalization um, comes uh, comes to the taking care of the client's most important needs, as I mentioned before. Um, because um, it still addresses the client's needs, uh, the digital factoring. And um, this is the clue when it comes to the dynamic growth of the business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And of course, beside these aspects, they are be before, be beside these aspects uh, which I call standard, there are most um, other things um, which are not standard, I would say. So, which are the kind of a cherry on the cake mm -hmm. and, and triggers a sense of wow. And as I mentioned before, uh, in our case, is a, and you mentioned before, mm -hmm. it's the integration with ILG accounting system mm -hmm. where the client have a possibility and the way to finance an invoice as soon as it is issued in the accounting system. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. yeah. You wanted to add? Here, Federico? Right, um, because the numbers that you were giving, Christian, uh, yeah. all over the same, and uh, I just yes. wanted to um, give an example. In, in Spain, for instance, uh, you have about three million companies, uh, and, uh, and factoring is done today with uh, something like 20,000 companies. So what happens mm -hmm. to the rest? In, in Germany, it's, it's over okay. four million companies, and it's, a, it's nearly 25,000 companies that mm -hmm. are in the, in the factoring space. Mm -hmm. So what happens to the rest, right? Yeah. So, um, the potential is is yeah. It looks like enormous. it looks like uh, still corporate customers are mainly financed with the factoring services and SMEs still uncovered. So this is what 
these numbers are saying. I think general. it's worth to mention that SMEs maybe are starting to be covered right now. Mm -hmm. in, yep. When I'm speaking about, I'm referring to the Polish Factor Association, mm -hmm. but I think we should also think about the micro segments even uh, even more, because at some part of the journey, uh, they will grow up. They will became a. SME um, client, maybe a corporate client. So if you if we gave uh, this micro client a good education at the beginning, a good systems at the beginning, a good customer journey at the beginning, they will become more loyal to you. They will stay with you, and you will also have additional profits from it. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, all right. How do you think all? trends that we are seeing uh, uh, right now, like uh, implementation of the invoicing, new generations coming to the market, and, uh, and others, will influence the dynamic of the factoring during the next years here in our region. So the invoicing uh, will help, of course, because from my point of view, they will reduce frauds. Uh, we will be able to make also end customers' journey uh, much easier because we will be able to integrate with the uh, invoicing system and put, put all these invoices into our platform. So it would also make uh, uh, their life easier. But uh, the other thing is what drives the digitalization in our market. And I also think that we are forgetting about the younger generation because at some point of their life, I will refer to my personal example. I mm -hmm. have two, two daughters, and uh, Alicia is six years old right now. Ten years from now, she will enter this market, this, market, this banking market, yeah? And she will go to the, br what I'm saying, she will never go to your branch. She will do everything online, yes? She will expect to have everything online, the real-time decision. Uh, she will not have time as we had few years ago to go to the branch and to speak with the, with the uh, uh, relationship managers from the bank. So I think we need to remember that they are hitting us by storm. And <laughs> I f from my point of view, right now we are not ready for them. And uh, the, time f the time flies fast. So we need to speed up to remember about this new generation that are entering the market in a few years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts? I very much uh, support what uh, Carol is saying. I think uh, here uh, many of us uh, are getting praise for uh, some great uh, website that a person can just send uh, uh, an invoice online. But this is, come on, guys, it's already expired. Mm -hmm. This is the technology from, yes. this was cool uh, yes. five, seven, seven years yes. ago. It's, it's, it's literally outdated already. And I think everybody here uh, that is active, not only in factoring, but in all financial services, you need to think of uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, how many of you have a Revolut account in this uh, room? Can you see a raise of... Uh, not so... Uh, <laughs> some people, but not so many, right? When you first used uh, the Revolut app, you thought, wow, this was so cool, right? How cool do you think it's still now? It's still cool, it's still relevant, but it's, you know, it's the norm, app. right? It's just an app. Uh, do you think the guys in Revolut are sleeping saying, oh, we are great, we had this amazing app uh, that we started five, six years ago, we should uh, fire all our engineers now because we are quite big? No, they're actually building the future in five years from now. Yeah, but they, they were think, thinking yeah. like that six, seven years ago, yeah? Sorry? <laughs> they are thinking that uh, they are super intelligent yeah, already, six, seven years ago. I think they're investing in the, te in the technology of the future. Okay, and sure. I think, uh, to try to answer your question, mm -hmm. what we need to do mm -hmm. is we need to adopt all this technology. I'll give you uh, my personal uh, uh, vision in my head how this product that we promote today it should look like mm -hmm. in a very short space of time. By the way, all the technologies I will, you will think about to make this happen exist today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not even waiting for anything to happen. But mm -hmm. let's just imagine you're an entrepreneur you're going in your car, you, you are at the traffic light, and you see this cool, uh, maybe, uh, banners on some website. You're reading the news, and they say, do you want cash flow solution or invoice, invoice discounting, whatever. He clicks the button. There's an there's a avatar talking to him in <laughs> its own language, saying, welcome, we are doing this and that. 
would you like to make an account with us? Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. So a scan of the face. We have some biometric uh, friends uh, in yeah. the <laughs> providers here. They will immediately identify this person, do the KYC in a second, in a half a second. Mm -hmm. Your account was open one second later, yeah? Do you have an invoice? The guy just happens that he sent an invoice to somebody, right? So he takes a photo shoot, a photo screenshot or of his just phone. Don't, or just don't give a screenshot if we imagine that the invoice data will be available with the invoice, or if that, right? Yeah, so you can then just say, okay, yeah. I sent an invoice uh, yesterday to my client uh, XYZ. Uh, can we you even, say, find it in the database? The, guy, the yeah. avatar says, I found your, is this your yes. invoice? Yes, it is. Okay, I'm happy to announce you, you're, you're, you're financed. Your money will now be deployed to your bank account. All yeah. these things, I'm not joking. Think about yeah. it, what I just said. I exaggerate. Yes, bit. yes. But they exist I would today. like to have this. You Everything know, this exists process. today. The yes. avatar with the AI exists. I'm dreaming of the process. Uh, I'm very, mentioned the invoice. It already and exists in some markets. In Hungary, yeah. in, a second, in Serbia, it's been launched. Uh, Romania <laughs> will follow next year. So uh, that's yes. what we have to do, if yes. you ask me. And it's not even revolutionary, I would say. From what to start? We started. We don't know about the others, but... Uh, <laughs> I hope I don't inspire my competitors to move uh, so fast, you know. All right, all right. I would prefer they still sleep a bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, this is a dream process, you know, I think for SMEs. You issue the invoice and automatically you have an offer, or automatically it's finance, right? I don't need to send, upload, ask, send request anywhere. And, you know, it's very tempting for for people that uh, are in the product development to think about the technologies mm -hmm. and the features. But actually, we shouldn't care about that. Uh, of course, you need amazing processes to deliver that experience. But you should put yourself in the shoes of the client. The client doesn't yep. give a damn what you're doing in the back. Of course, and how you call it. It just needs the money yep. fast without any headaches, yep. if possible. Yeah? Yep. Maybe we should even think a little bit further than that uh, on what technology can do today. In the because many business models that we have today were not thinkable 10 or 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, so if they were not thinkable, what can we not think about in the future? Obviously, if we cannot think about it, <laughs> mm -hmm. we cannot imagine it. Uh, but some years ago, when the, the, the subject matter of um, DLT blockchain came up, uh, one of the ideas uh, that came up to my mind were, isn't this going to perhaps um, change the entire market and, and make banks, financial institutions, complete obsolete. So having the intermediary out of the game and, um, and therefore is, going, is banks going to be around in 10 years' time or are we just having banking like Bill Gates said one time? Hmm? <laughs> so the problem is the banks but not the banking. And are, are we going to have banks in 10 years' time? So this is something that I'm, 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 I'm thinking with the technology we have out there, probably some of them or many of them not necessary anymore. So our business in receivables finance would change completely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, answering, answering your question, Olena. Um, definitely AI has the capability to, to be the new engine or which accelerates let's say, the new era of digital disruption. Um, however, however, the problem, the most significant challenge, I would say, is the better word, is that we still haven't quite figured out in the factoring industry mm -hmm. how to find a useful use cases for this technology. And um, business world as a whole, um, NGOs, individuals, all need to act to work together to make this change happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Federica, you gave us an example just now in your presentation how machine learning and AI can be used in the factory, <coughs> right? When can it be scalable? Scalable or scalable or or applicable? Applicable. Yes. Ah, I mean, uh, it's been applicable in our space at least since uh, over ten years. Um, AI is being used for matching invoices and payments um, in our application, so uh, it eases the, the work of uh, having manual intervention and the machine is telling you which payment um, is probably going to be allocated to which invoice or vice versa. Uh, if you cannot match it automatically, and that is 50% of the cases like that, 
Um, so that's been in, 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 in the application already. Uh, machine learning, of course, uh, you saw it in our presentation. Uh, we have a lot of data, and um, um, just to give you an example, um, our systems at our clients, of course, uh, process every year over 200 billion euro transaction volume with over 100 million invoices. So the amount of data resident in these systems is just enormous. Now, uh, computing them, uh, trying to figure out what, what does that mean, what's in there, um, that is part of machine learning, mm, supervised, unsupervised, uh, as I mentioned before. And uh, when will we see it? We are now in beta testing uh, next year. We'll see it live. So mm -hmm. by the time I'm here next year, I hope to show you guys uh, the results of that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I really like the example that was uh, mentioned earlier about this um, Instagram girl that was uh, mm -hmm. gaining more and more uh, followers. And uh, I think it was about one week ago I read about this, uh, this uh, case. Mm -hmm. And the main conclusion was, um, is AI fooling us around? Is AI testing us as a human beings? Is AI testing our intelligence? Because right now we believe in everything what we see here. Yeah? So, but when I'm thinking about this uh, fashion industry, yeah, so the mm -hmm. commercials, maybe, maybe this is the trend because uh, you mentioned about the holograms. Yeah? I can imagine that this model have a hologram, she will go walk, she will walk here. Yeah? Uh, the problem with her is, maybe not the problem, she will never get age or she will age very well. She will never be sick. She, will, she can work 24 seven, but is it a proper use of an AI? In my opinion, not. Uh, because looking at our industry, what AI means to me, uh, for example, if you have a, for instance, if you have a debtor, very good debtor with very good history, credit history and uh, payment history, with proper use of AI, I'm able to tell you why this debtor is going to bankrupt nine months from now. And this is the proper use of AI in our industry. Of course, I'm not talking about the fashion industry. Of course, speeding up the process, uh, protecting uh, from frauds. This is the proper use of AI. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's speak a little bit about frauds. So how actually the frauds in digital factoring can be minimized? I know that this is one of the challenges all factors are uh, having. So what are your opinions on that? Um, we can tell from, from our experience in our systems, uh, um, you know, the other day I was talking to uh, one of the experts in the market called Lenvi, Risk Factor. Um, mm -hmm. And um, we're having a discussion because they're partners of ours and uh, they said, uh, you know, we have, um, in our system, we have 30 criteria to detect if there is something unusual. Mm -hmm. Even Benford uh, role, meaning that if something is strange, there is a trigger coming up in the um, payments on Sundays and things like this. Um, so, um, so we already have uh, 30 criteria. Uh, and I said, ah, Federico, hmm. peanuts. We do 400 <laughs> uh, criteria. And I, wa I was like, oh my God, 400. <laughs> what can it possibly be that you, you know, 400 criteria that you, um, that you do um, look at? But it seems that, uh, that it helps. Um, and, and um, what, we, what we did is, of course, apart from this, from these 30 criteria, and they really detect uh, if something is wrong. Actually, at one client that we implemented it, um, basically a week later, um, a possible fraud popped up, and it saved the client 20 million euro. So um, the system was paid for the next generations. Um, but what, what is out there uh, uh, on top of that, and where technology com can come in, um, six years ago, when, when blockchain came up, and I told, talked about this in, in one of these sessions here, um, was uh, that blockchain technology, which uh, Bitcoin technology, which is blockchain, um, allows you to encrypt or hash data, uh, which could be your invoices. And uh, by doing that, you could, in principle, have um, a system, a repository that has all invoices hashed in a system, in a registry, and tell you if, um, if there is an invoice that's probably going to be sold twice. 
one of the reasons of fraud in the industry. Um, the diffusion of innovation is the problem in here. So the technology is out there. Now Monetago is uh, one of our partners, and they deploy the systems also since the same time as we do. And it's so difficult to get bankers convinced that this is a very easy to use, simple, cost efficient system that will prevent your whole industry in your region and elsewhere um, to avoid double pledged invoices fraud. But innovate, the innovation of putting this into place, that is the one that's taking so much time. So doing it. <laughs> it's there, but it takes time to implement it. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the problem we face. Okay. So a lot of uh, the things, uh, I mean, technology can be also used to try to uh, to, to spot uh, any alterations in any documents, basically. There is a company we spoke with in Silicon Valley some time ago. They do um, uh, alterations of documents in PDF at pixel level. So. Mm -hmm. It's something that the naked uh, Romani human eye cannot see. I was going to say naked Romanian eye. Maybe <laughs> Romanian eye could spot it, but human eye would not. Uh, so uh, basically, th this is just one example of the many things uh, that can be done. But uh, I like uh, Federico's uh, example because I remember there's a famous uh, blow up in the industry. Uh, I don't know how, how many of you have heard. You probably might remember it, Federico. Urica. Do you remember Urica? It was a French. Uh, UK-based uh, uh, alternative factoring company, around 300 million euro volume, so sizable business. The CEO uh, was the former CEO of uh, uh, G Facto France, which is the biggest uh, mm -hmm. factoring company in France. So mm -hmm. quite f good people, you know, top managers from the industry. And they had a fraud of about 4 million at the time. And I remember, because I met the guy, and we try, I, I tried to learn from their mistakes. So he told me when they went to the creditor uh, meeting, there were five banks holding the same set of documents. So this guy had sold 4 million times for five, you know? <laughs> so they were, uh, at the beginning, the bankers were laughing. Oh, look at these guys. They have nothing. They have no guarantees. But they had the same documents. And they said at the end, mm -hmm. I was the only guy who had some collateral. But the company actually blew up mm -hmm. because of that. B not... They had the collateral, so they were okay from that perspective, but the investors mm -hmm. lost trust in the model because mm -hmm. they said, how many millions you could lose for us if we mm -hmm. carry on like that? Mm -hmm. So fraud, yes, we all know it's a big, massive mm -hmm. uh, risk in our, uh, mm -hmm. in our industry. And, is there and uh, just like the colleagues uh, in cybersecurity said earlier, the, the, the fraudsters are becoming smarter and they use yeah. all these technologies against us and you mm -hmm. have to outpace them. And uh, mm -hmm. it's not... Uh, if you can lower it by 99.9 percent, .9%, I think we should be happy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Will, you cannot remove it entirely, honestly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And is there a tool right now to check whether invoices financed already? Yeah, Dalek? I would like yep. to add that um, for all intents and purposes to this day, um, none of the factoring company in the world uh, will implement or implemented uh, full-scale AI today processes, yeah? Um, this is the reality. Um, however, we have a lot of uh, companies which are partially using AI in the factoring industry, especially in the digital invoice uh, financing, I would say. And what needs to happen is the change of thinking regarding new aspect of where to use AI. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, there are two areas where mm -hmm. the using of a AI could um, bring great benefits or, or it's very much needed. Uh, first of all, in the area of, you mentioned before, Olena, uh, risk or fraud identification uh, process because um, we have a lot of data, and mm -hmm. um, this is, let's say, including all of the institutions, including factoring companies, ha has a massive amount of data. And uh, the second aspect is, um, is the credit decision-making um, processes. Uh, and um, 
this is the direction where all the companies should uh, should going uh, going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have some questions from the audience? Yes. Can we have a microphone, please? I don't think. <laughs> Not you. Why? I had a question about uh, the microfactory. I mean, what is the average amount of the factors applied? Like, what do we call the micro? Mm -hmm. And also, what is the average default rate? Mm -hmm. So the question is, what is the default rate so far? <laughs> you <laughs> in the micro factoring. Okay. Uh, of course, I cannot say about the default rate. It's our, let's say, secret sauce. Uh, but regarding your first question, the easier one, I would say, uh, the average amount is uh, about 4,000 euro per invoice, of course. And uh, the micro factoring limits in uh, within the ING invoice digital financing, it's up to 50,000 euro, more or less. Uh, and therefore, of the, our uh, clients are um, entrepreneurs, or entrepreneurs, more or less 20, 25% uh, are SMEs. Mm -hmm. Maybe I try to provide you with we, With it's, your data. it's transparent. We don't think of it uh, as a secret. Uh, so in our case, it's less than 3,000 euro average invoice. And uh, default rates uh, would be less than 2% of the total exposure. Uh, and it's, it's, it's maybe you think the initially, I think people think, oh, it could be higher because, you, it, it, for example, if you look at the NPL ratio in Romania, across the banks, the banking sector is 3%, so we're under the banking sector. But it, it makes total sense. Be think about it. You have one seller of an invoice of and one buyer of an invoice. Something has to go wrong with both players in 45 days, which is the average financing period. It's kind of impossible that both of them will go under so that they don't pay. Maybe one of them, things can happen to one of them, but for both of them to collapse in 45 days, it's kind of unlikely to start with. And then, of course, you have processes to manage collections, etc. So that's why it's, it's actually quite OK. And we know from other markets as well, it's, it's fairly low in general. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yes. Can we have microphone, please? Because we should hear the, the question. Yeah. We will exchange. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for the, all the panelists uh, for the open discussion. Uh, Christian, my, my question is actually to you. You're quite a legend in the uh, Romanian startup uh, community. Can you share some of the challenges that uh, you've encountered in, you know, in your journey of building the, building the company and, and how you overcame them? Uh, what are we, we need, think? We need a whole conference just to, to <laughs> share some of the life stories I've learned. Uh, uh, thank you for the compliment. I, I think it's a bit exaggerated, honestly. But um, I, you're in a way, uh, so I came from the industry, at the, serving the big boys, the big, the big corporates. And we, as I told you at the beginning, we, we felt like we wanted to do, to have an impact, basically. And that's what drives us. I can tell you we've done, I mean, all, although we had 20 years of experience, we know the industry like very well huh? before we started. We've made all the mistakes you can imagine. <laughs> uh, and I'm happy to share. I, I'll tell you just a brief one, maybe if I can do it. I hope I can do it in 25 yeah, seconds. Yeah, we have one minute. One minute yeah. uh, for example, when we started the, the company in Serbia with my friend and colleague here, Pavel Vlasic, when we were so excited, you know, we had the Serbian press writing about us. We were in the top five news in the Serbia at that day. And a few hours after, we were expecting to be flooded with the requests, you know. Mm -hmm. And nothing was happening, you know, and we start to panic, you know, after six, seven hours, there's not even one phone call. I was telling them in Romania when we started, we had like, the phones were super busy, you know, 100 uh -huh. people tried to reach us at the same time. So we called the IT team in Bucharest, we said, what the heck is going on? Is the website live? Is it going on? Yeah, it's all good. They checked everything, they called us back, everything is perfect. We figure out, 
what was happening, because we had launched the website or the Serbian version like only a few days before, Google was not indexed, hadn't mm -hmm. indexed us. So people are going online and they couldn't find us anywhere in Serbia, you know? And we observed the incredible traffic on the Romanian website coming all from Serbia. So we were like, <laughs> what the heck, you know? But everything was in Romanian at the time. So immediately we put something in Serbian. We're live in Serbia, click here to root them. We made all these stupid mistakes, it's incredible. But I, I'm happy to tell you a lot more. Yeah? This is just one of the many. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you very much for sharing your experience. Thank you, Lukas, Christian, Karol, and Federica. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lena. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.